Chapter 8, Real Estate Financing. The lending process, you see on page 136, uh, incorporates or the origination of loans, the processing of loans, the underwriting of loans, and the servicing of loans. And so that's what our chapter here is going to do. We're going to go through that, that lending process cycle, if you will, found on page 136. We'll start with uh, loan origination. Loan origination is the process of making or initiating a loan, starting with meeting with the prospective borrower and completing a loan application. Uh, we use a standardized application form, which we're going to see in a second on, on, on the other page, on page 137, called the Uniform Residential Loan Application. Uh, loan processing is where we determined the borrower's ability to repay. We also estimate the value of the property. We research the marketability of title because we want to make sure that uh, the buyer borrower is getting marketable or good or clear title. And then loan processing also is preparing all the documents necessary to, uh, in fact, to close the loan. Uh, credit scores are important. Um, most loans on, on the market are credit score driven with the exception of FHA loans. and We'll talk about that as well. The higher the credit score, the lower the risk. This is important for your final exam. The higher the credit score, the lower the risk, the lower the, lower the interest rate, and the less down payment required. So higher credit scores mean lower risk, which means lower interest rates and lower down payments. A standardized uniform residential loan application form figure 8.1 is broken up into these sections. The type of mortgage desired in the loan terms. The second section, the property information on the, the, the purpose of the loan. The third, borrower and co-borrower information. Fourth, the fourth section, employment information. The fifth, monthly gross income. The sixth, are assets and liabilities. The seventh is any transaction details. And the, uh, the section eight is information for the Equal Credit Opportunity Act and for HDMA re reporting. Page 143, we see an income verification form uh, that is a standardized form that's being used, and it calls for three main things. One, continuous employment for at least two years, uh, demonstrating a stable monthly gross income, and also if you're a self-employed uh, borrower, you need to provide not only personal but also corporate income tax returns for a minimum of two years. Three qualifying ratios, loan to value, housing expense ratio, which is the front end, total debt income ratio back end. Loan to value, and the most important of these three right now is the housing expense ratio. We want to know for our final exam what that is. That's called the front end ratio, housing expense ratio. The loan to value ratio is simply the amount of the loan divided by the sales price. So if we take the amount of the loan is 175 175,000, the sale price is 250,000, we have an LTV of 70%. So the loan to value ratio is a percentage, which is uh, a percentage of the loan amount to the sale price. The housing expense ratio, this important one we want to know, is PITI divided by the monthly income. Your principal and interest payments plus your property tax reserves plus your insurance reserves divided by the total gross monthly income. So if the PITI in this example is $1,575 and the, and the uh, monthly gross income of our borrower is $7,000, our front end ratio is 22%. Now the back end ratio, which is the total debt to income ratio, is all debt on a monthly basis plus your PITI divided by your monthly income. So if your uh, PITI is $1,575 and other monthly income expense is $1,500, we put those two together, which is $3,075, and divide by $7,000, that's our back end ratio. All debt plus PITA. So here are front end ratios and back end ratios for conventional loans, FHA, VA loans. And a conventional loan, incidentally, is any loan that's not an FHA or VA loan. 
So we have FH loans, which are insured by the federal government. We have VA loans, which are guaranteed by the uh, Veterans Administration. And then we have all the other loans, which are just called conventional loans. These are typical front-end, back-end ratios that will qualify you for a loan if you fall within these categories. An appraisal is an opinion value, and we know what that is. And, of course, a lender is going to have an appraisal done on the property because he wants to make sure that the collateral that he's lending on is going to be worth the amount of the loan. Lender, lenders also generally require these types of insurance before they'll make a loan. Homeowner's hazard insurance, flood insurance if you're in a flood hazard area, and mortgage insurance if your loan-to-value ratio is greater than 80%. You have to buy private mortgage insurance uh, to cover the difference between the 80% and what your loan-to-value ratio is if it's greater than 80%. The loan underwriting process is the process of evaluating and assessing the risks involved and determining whether a borrower, borrower and a property meet the minimum requirements that are established by the lender, the investor, or a secondary mortgage market in order to make the loan to the borrower. So it is the loan underwriting uh, portion of the process that really determines whether or not the, the borrower is going to get the loan. Loan servicing takes place after the loan is issued. The loan servicing is where the lender may continue to collect the monthly payments and uh, service the loan that way uh, and maybe take the, uh, the uh, they'll either uh, keep the loan in-house in which they keep the loan servicing uh, to themselves or what they'll do is they'll continue to collect monthly payments for let's say an investor then they'll take a fee for that sending the mortgage payment on to the uh, investor. Mr. Borrower, if you don't pay off the note like you're supposed to, or you don't pay your taxes and insurance, or you don't seek our perm uh, permission before you make major alterations, you will accelerate the, the loan. If you will, we'll call the loan due and owing immediately. Important to know. Uh, for foreclosure and alternatives to foreclosures, uh, in Illinois, we're a judicial foreclosure state, which means that before we can have foreclosure in Illinois, we have to actually have a court proceeding. Uh, some states are non-judicial foreclosure states, but we're a judicial foreclosure state. Also, we have redemptive rights in Illinois, which means we have a right of redemption or a, and a statutory right of reinstatement. Uh, and we also have uh, deeds in lieu of foreclosure and short sales. Uh, it's important for us to know this statutory right of reinstatement that you as a borrower, even if you fall behind uh, by when the uh, lender uh, contacts us as far as uh, filing suit to foreclose, we have 90 days from the time we are served summons on our delinquency to make all back payments and we reinstate the loan and go on just as we did before. Uh, deed in lieu of foreclosure is essentially where we go to the lender, give him the deed, and uh, he stops foreclosure. We sort of hand him the keys if he doesn't foreclose. A short sale, the short sale is a sale where the amount of the sale is not going to be enough to cover what the borrower owes his lender. What's important is the deficiency judgment, which is the difference between what the property sells for and what is owed to the lender. Uh, that amount can be uh, a separate judgment that the lender files against the seller. So Mr. Seller and Mr. Agent, to the extent that you can, you want that deficiency judgment either waived or reduced. Uh, so be aware of deficiency judgments. Also important. Take uh, mortgage fraud is important. Mortgage fraud, who's involved in it? All these mortgage fraud schemes typically are done 80% of the time by industry insiders. Industry insiders are corrupt mortgage uh, a loan officer, corrupt appraisers, corrupt attorneys, corrupt real estate brokers, uh, corrupt title companies. So individuals working title companies. They work in concert uh, to defraud the lender out of uh, monies in uh, mortgage loans. Uh, and this is to the tune of many, many millions of dollars each month. 
and this is a bad deal, and you certainly as a uh, lender, as a, um, a, a ethical uh, licensee, don't want to be involved in it. And if you are involved or you think you're involved, you need to uh, notify either the title companies or the mortgage companies uh, that are involved in this that you think there's some fraud going on, but don't you participate in it. Take your financing review quiz, page on one, found on page 153.